Hello everyone, I am Apoorva. Today I am going to talk about the structure of the heart. We all know that blood, blood vessels and the heart constitute the circulatory system. And heart is the pumping organ of the body. It is the heart which, which pumps the blood to each and every cell of the body. Right? So, when the heart has given a task of pumping blood to all over the body throughout your life, it should be strong enough, right? There is a reason heart is made strong by having two walls. Two walls. So, the two walls of the heart constitute the pericardium. The two walls of the heart are together called the pericardium of the heart. Okay? The walls of the heart are called pericardium. And when the heart is contracting all the time, right? When the heart is pumping the blood all the time, that means it has like contractions either in the articles or in the ventricles. So when the heart is contracting all the time, it can have frictions between the walls of the heart because it has to write. So, which is not good. There should be some mechanism by which the friction that is created because of continuous contractions should be prevented. So, between the two walls of the heart there is a fluid called pericardial fluid. The pericardial fluid which is present in the wall, between the walls of the heart prevent the friction that is caused due to contractions of the heart. Right? And then, if you look at the internal structure of the heart Oh, before that do you know the size of the heart? It is approximately size of your wrist and it is located between the lungs and is protected by the ribcage. You all might be thinking heart is located to the left of your body. No, it is not true. It is located between the lungs. But the posterior end is slightly uh, towards the left. So during the contractions, you feel that your heart is at your left. But it's not true. It is in the center of your center between the lungs. If you look at the internal structure of the heart, the heart is made up of four chambers. The upper auricles or atria and the lower ventricles. Most of four chambers. So why four chambers? What is the role of the four chambers in the heart? To know that, let us discuss the mechanism of the path of the blood that is followed. Okay. In the body. So, this is the heart, right? And this is the lung. And this is all over the body. So, first of all, what happens? The deoxygenated blood, in the sense, the blood carrying carbon dioxide. Okay, the carbon dioxide released from the cells. The deoxygenated blood from all of all over your body will be brought to the heart. Okay. Now what does the heart do? It pumps this deoxygenated blood to the lungs. Why lungs? Because lungs are the lungs is a place where the exchange of gases takes place. I mean, now the carbon dioxide from the blood will be exchanged for oxygen. So, heart pumps blood to the lungs. Now, in the lungs, the exchange takes place. And the oxygenated blood from the lungs is again brought back to the heart. So, what does heart do? It again pumps back the blood it got from the body. But make, after making it, oxygenated through lungs. So the oxygenated blood from the heart is given to the body again. So it is the deoxygenated blood from the body go to the heart which gives it to lungs for exchange of gas and here exchange of, after exchange of gas the lungs again give back the blood to the heart and the heart pumps this blood to the body. So if you look at blood passes the heart twice. That is the reason this type of circulation
circulation is called double circulation. Let us look this process in detail. So, as I said, the deoxygenated blood from all over the body. When I said all over the body, it means from head to toe is brought to the right auricle. So, the deoxygenated blood from the legs and abdomen is brought to the right auricle through a vein called inferior vena cava. And the deoxygenated blood from the upper part of your body, that is from your head, neck and arms, is brought to the right auricle through superior vena cava. So, once the blood is brought to the right auricle, the deoxygenated blood is brought to the right auricle, it pumps this deoxygenated blood into right ventricle. And between the right auricle and right ventricle is a valve, which is called tricuspid valve. Why it is called tricuspid? Because it is it has three cusps. Three cusps in the sense three three flaps. That is the reason it is called tricuspid valve. And between the right auricle and right ventricle is a tricuspid valve. And from the right, the right ventricle, the deoxygenated blood now has to be given to the lungs, right? So it is through the pulmonary artery the deoxygenated blood goes to the lungs. Okay. To right and left lungs. In the lungs, the exchange of gases takes place. And the oxygenated blood from the lungs is brought back to the heart, specifically to the left auricle through pulmonary veins. Okay. Through pulmonary veins, the oxygenated blood from the lungs is brought to the left auricle. So now, from the left auricle, the oxygenated blood is pumped into the left ventricle. Right. And this left ventricle now has the task to pump the blood to each and every cell of the body from head to toe. So, it pumps the blood to all of the body through systemic iota. Okay. So, if you observe the functions of four chambers of the heart, the function of the auricle, the function of the auricles is to just pump blood to the respective ventricles. But the function of ventricles is to pump blood to far away places. Like the function of the right ventricle is to pump blood to the lungs. And the function of left ventricle is to pump blood to all over the body. That means ventricles have to contract strongly. That is the reason the walls of the ventricles are thicker compared to the walls of the auricles. And between the ventricles, the left ventricle has a thicker wall because it has to pump blood to all over the body. Right? So, yeah. And when I talked about the valves, the valve between the right auricle and right ventricle is called tricuspid valve. The valve between left auricle and left ventricle is called mitral valve or bicuspid valve. Uh, because, bicuspid because it has two flaps. Okay. And there is also a valve between the pulmonary artery and the right ventricle. And that valve is called pulmonary valve. And there is also a valve between left ventricle and the systemic iota. It is called as aortic valve. So what is the function of the valve? Why is a valve needed at those positions? It's because we all know the blood passes from the right auricle to the right ventricle. And right ventricle pumps the blood to the, pulmonary, to the lungs through pulmonary artery. So when the ventricle has to pump the blood to pulmonary artery, pump, into, pump the blood into the pulmonary artery, it has to contract. But when it contracts, the blood can flow in the reverse direction into the ventricles. There are auricles, right? The, when the ventricles contract, the, bed, the blood can uh, go back to their auricles. Which is not good. Which shouldn't happen. In order to prevent that, 
the gates between the auricles and ventricles are closed during the contraction of the ventricles in the same way in the same way the left auricle and left ventricle have mitral valve in between because when the left ventricle contracts the blood should not flow back into the auricle right so there is always a need of regulation at every step so once again let's revise it the deoxygenated blood from all over the body is brought to right auricle through inferior vena cava and superior vena cava and this deoxygenated blood is pumped into uh, from the right auricle is pumped into right ventricle and this right ventricle is the one which pumps this deoxygenated blood to the lungs for exchange of gases and the deoxygenated blood is now will now become oxygenated and the oxygenated blood from the lungs is brought back to the heart into the left auricle through pulmonary veins and this oxygenated blood from the left auricle is pumped into the left ventricle and this left ventricle now pumps this oxygenated blood through to all over the body through systemic aorta because ventricles have uh, ventricles are assigned a bigger task than auricles that is to contract strongly the walls of the ventricles are thicker compared to the walls of the auricles and between the ventricles the wall of the left ventricle is thicker and heart is double wall and the wall of the heart is called as pericardium and between the walls is pericardial tree right yes that is for today thank you